Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to In Conversation with Rob Buckler. Now, thanks to your suggestions and your ideas, today's conversation is going to be about Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge, as that is what a few of you have actually requested. You seem to be really interested in knowing not only just probably my memories about Kate or Catherine, but also about her role and, and what what's going to happen, what the future holds and that kind of thing. So I thought it'd be quite fun to have a conversation purely about Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge. Now, Kate or Catherine, you can pick your choices to how you wish to address her, but as I said before, I knew her as Kate, so for the purpose of this, I will probably slip between Kate and Catherine. I hope I don't offend anybody, but as I've mentioned, I was uh, given permission when I first met Kate to address her as Kate, and that's how I've always, I've always known her. But when talking to a third party, officially, I will try to always remember to address her as Catherine, or of course, as the Duchess of Cambridge. Now, Kate was born in 1982, the 9th of January, to her parents who are a Michael and Carol Middleton. Now, it might surprise some of you to know that Michael and Carol had no kind of royal background or, or really any royal connections. The reality is they worked in retail. Uh, I believe that Carol at one time was an air stewardess. I remember reading that somewhere. Don't know if that's true, but I remember reading that. And... I'm always very cautious with what I read, as you can tell. But, so the background was very normal, if I can say that. I've also kind of read that they, class, they classed them as middle, middle class. Now, in the UK, some of you will be aware that they have a what they call a class system. And over the years, it's been changed and people have said there's different classes and, you know, more levels to it. But the reality is, in the UK, we've always seen it as three classes. You've got the, the, the working class, who are the kind of the, the poorer end of society. You've got the middle class, which are the people that still work, but they've got relatively good money and nice properties. And then you've got the upper class who are the aristocracy and royals. Now, because of the fact that her parents were middle class and had a bit of money, they were able to send Kate to private school. And she went to Marlborough College, which is in Wiltshire. Now, that was a little bit of a, a journey for them because she was actually, her parents lived in Bucklebury, which is in Berkshire, so it would have been quite a, it would have, well obviously she would have boarded, but it was, um, it wasn't exactly next door, but the college has got a very good reputation and it's known for offering an excellent education. So that was why they picked Marlborough College for their daughter. And then lastly, they then sent her to Scotland to the world-renowned St Andrews University, which has, it, it, well, I don't even need to explain St Andrews University, it kind of speaks for itself, it's, it's very well known, it's had a lot of famous students over the years and most recently it had Prince William, Duke of Cambridge as one of their uh, better known students. Now, of course, it was at St Andrews University where Kate met William. And from what I've kind of been told and what I've read, it wasn't a case of they started dating right away because I I remember uh, being told that I think she joined in 2001 and it wasn't until 2003 when they actually began dating. And that's not because I've been told that by them. That's just, again, what I've heard over the years. And I obviously met them from 2004, so they were they would only been together at that point for possibly about a year. But even when I met them, they just seemed such a, a a great couple. I met them both independently at different times, but they I could just see that they were a they were they were a team. Even then, they were a team. They were best friends. So I was really um, pleased, obviously, with the way things have turned out. 
I mean, at one time when they had the, the breakup, as I've mentioned before, I was really upset about it because I wanted I wanted this to work. I wanted I wanted there to be a royal wedding. I wanted it to be William and, and Kate. And I remember, you know, when I knew they were dating and, and, and I said knew them, I remember thinking, wouldn't it be amazing to actually think one day I actually looked after and worked for both of them as well. So I kind of always hoped that would happen. I must confess that I didn't ever think she would go with the name Catherine. I, because we all knew her as Kate, I always thought it was going to be William and Kate. But of course, as we all know now, uh, it has always been slightly changed where it's been kind of made clear that her name is Catherine. And as I said earlier on, forgive me if I get mixed up between the two because I obviously knew her during my time uh, with the Roth family and knew her as Kate. Now, of course, the love between them grew over the years. While I was there, I very much saw this happen. I saw the two of them, as I mentioned, as a great team, best friends, very much in love. I felt very honoured, humbled, uh, very lucky to be around in those years to be to be part of that. And I was there right up until the royal wedding, which for me was, it was such a kind of magical thing to actually think I was there right up to that point where she joined the royal family and soon after was when I left but it it was quite amazing to think that I was you know kind of witness to all of that and then as soon as they began this new life as the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge it was kind of you think I've done my bit you know you feel really really proud mm -hmm. that you were you were around you were there to kind of to help if you like in a way and to, to kind of get to know them and then after the wedding obviously the last few years, the last few years, it's, it's now 10 years, but we've all seen them grow together. We've seen the love develop. We've seen them undertake all these royal engagements, which has been uh, fantastic just to see both of them support each other and to see how this, uh, this has grown. Now, the one thing people do ask me is, obviously one day she's going to be queen. What training does she have for that? Where do they send her? Who teaches her? And the reality is, it, she doesn't get sent off for lessons. I'd like to think I'd be the man because I teach etiquette. I'd like to be the man that they would call upon, but that's not going to happen because that, that just doesn't happen. They don't get sent off for lessons. They don't bring somebody in to teach or train them. The reality is that they, they learn from within. They learn from the family. They, re they learn from their spouses. So th that is how the training, for any royal, that's how the training takes place. And for Kate, this is what she would have learnt from, very much from her husband, from her um, in-laws, from her, her uh, father-in-law, and obviously step-mother-in-law. And also she would learn from the Queen, because who better than to learn from Queen Elizabeth II, who has did it, done it, got the t-shirt. I mean, she she is the essence of everything is to be a royal. So she'll very much learn from them. And, and we've seen that. I mean, over the years, I've noticed, you've all noticed how she's perfected things from everything from pub public speaking to the way she walks, the way she sits. There's this theory about the way she sits is so iconic and they're called it the Duchess Lamp. And a lot of royal experts out there have said, oh, it's wonderful, you know, Catherine has perfected and created the Duchess Slant. Well, I'm sorry to say, it's absolute nonsense. The Duchess Slant, as it's been nicknamed, was around long before because the Queen, if you look at images of Queen Elizabeth II back in the, the 50s, 60s, um, dare I even say the 40s, you'll see that when she sat down, she had the exact same um, posture. She also did the slant. So in a way, it's, it's actually Queen Elizabeth's, um, the second's um, slant, because she actually was the one that was, was seen, I suppose, doing it all those years ago. So it wasn't suddenly that uh, Catherine um, or Kate suddenly came up with this idea. She would have learned, I'm, I'm guessing, from watching the Queen. So it's credited to the Queen. So, so I just want to put the record straight there that that is something that she would have learnt from, from the Queen and not something that she would have just suddenly thought one day, I know what, I'm going to invent a new way to sit down. So 
See, what people forget is that even in years gone by with Prince William's mother, uh, Diana, Princess Wales, it was the, the same for her. She didn't suddenly go off and have lessons. She had to learn from the family. So the, her husband, Prince Charles, would have kept her right. And again, the Queen would potentially have kept her right. But slight little difference with Diana, Princess of Wales. She was from aristocracy. And I'm not meaning that to uh, say that um, Kate didn't know what she was doing. Mm. The, the, with the aristocracy, they kind of understand, that they, they're kind of from a young age, they kind of understand the kind of rules and what happens at court because they attend court, they're around royals, so they see how things are done, they know how to behave. For Kate, she didn't have that opportunity because her parents wouldn't have been mixing in those kind of circles. So it, it, I suppose, if you like, for Diana Princess of Wales, it was slightly easier. It's the same with other uh, ladies that have married into their own family. Normally their backgrounds would be aristocratic or even royal. I mean, at one time, royals married royals that that was it was as simple as that you you wouldn't a royal would never dare marry anyone that wasn't a royal you'd have to be a royal and then lastly it became obviously aristocrats and and now today thankfully 21st century modern royal family anybody can marry into it so even somebody sitting at home watching this today listening to me talking about this one day uh, I suppose you have to be slightly young, or maybe your children or your grandchildren, one day could marry into the British royal family. It's completely possible now, so which is a nice thing. But as I said, it's it. That's why they they very much learn from the family members. They learn from other people around them within the court as to how to do things, how to behave, how to act, and how to be royal. Another mistake people have made or they've said to me is how amazing it is that Kate married into the royal family. It, it, it's like a commoner, you know, the first commoner to marry into the royal family because royals would normally marry royals or aristocrats. And that's untrue. Kate was not the first commoner. This is going to horrify many of you out there. But at the time when the Queen Mother, uh, our Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, who's the mother of the present Queen Elizabeth II, when she married into the royal family, she was a Lady Elizabeth Bowes Lyon uh, of the Strathmore family, who are uh, aristocratic family in Scotland, and they have the world famous Glam's Castle. Now, when she uh, started dating the then Duke of York, who later became King George VI, um, it was extraordinary because it it, it was so unusual um, for this relationship because, as I've mentioned, it was normally royals would, would marry royals. And here we had who they classed as a commoner uh, dating the, a royal and then eventually married uh, her prince. And this was hugely unusual because it, it never kind of happened. And, and so the Queen Mother... <laughs> ironically, was classed as the first commoner to marry into the royal family. And if I might say, what a bloody fantastic job she did because look at how she made her royal family. It was wonderful because she she added something really special to it. She um, just, everything about her, she was such a wonderful, wonderful lady. I sadly never met her, but I know people that did know her. And she just had the, the wit, the charm, everything about being a royal. And, and it wasn't so much, she really didn't really learn it from the, the family. She, it, was, it was within her. It was how she was as a person. But she did everything beautifully. And look how wonderful um, she was with her family, with how she brought a queen up and the queen's sister, Princess Margaret. And of course, supported her husband, who suddenly became George VI, which was not supposed to happen because... His brother, King Edward VIII, he was supposed to have been a king and should have had a long reign as king, but obviously that didn't happen. And the, the throne was then, uh, the crown was passed to the Duke uh, of York at that point, the Duke and Duchess of York, and suddenly they found themselves king and queen uh, with very little choice in the matter. And as I said, what an amazing job she did and then got us, I say got us through, but you know, helped and kept the morale going through the war as well, you know, and um, 
was amazing, truly amazing uh, lady who lived to over a hundred. Uh, if memory is correct, I think she died around about 2002. So uh, she would have been about 101 when she when she passed, but she was a, a truly remarkable lady and classed as the first commoner to marry into the royal family. <laughs> So I suppose if you like, Kate would, would have been aware of the family she was marrying into, she was aware of the history, what had taken place, you know, things that have happened in the past. And I suppose for her, she wants to get it right. You know, it's really important to get it right. So you might, I mean, people like myself probably notice that maybe she, we, we can see, you know, that she, she tries really hard. Um, maybe not so much now, but initially, because she want, wanted to get it right. She wanted you know, to, to do the job credit, she obviously wanted people to, to like having her there because, you know, it's really important for the British Royal Family to have the support of the people because the world we live in today, if you don't have the support of the of your your country and your citizens, then the reality of Royal Families don't survive as we've seen um, over the past hundred years. When people ask me what does it mean to be royal, how you know what what what's the process, you know what what does it take to be a royal? Well, from what I've seen with the Queen and other senior members of the royal family, it's it's really down to manners, politeness, kindness. You know, this is something that they all are. They're all polite. They're all kind. They all mind their manners, and you know these are just good old fashioned values, and that's what they're very much what they're all about and what they promote and I think that's really important today with with any anybody from any walk of life because that's what makes a person you know I've, I've always said that you know rudeness it destroys you kindness makes you and I I believe that I believe that if you're if you're kind to somebody we all remember it. if you're rude to somebody um, we remember that but it also can can finish you can destroy you um, so it's really important I think for for them to the way they are, the way they behave, the way they act. I think that's the most important thing. I think it, it doesn't even come down to, you know, we're human, they're human, and they make mistakes, we make mistakes, that's that's a given. But to an extent, we can forgive, obviously, mistakes and errors. But if somebody is rude to you, that is obviously very, very different. So I think what makes, to, to be a royal, what makes you a royal, it's, it's down to your personality. It's down to your humour, your how how you interact, the things you say, the things you don't say. You know, this is all what what it means to be a royal. And then, on top of that, then it's about how you how you walk, how you shake a hand. Well, in the days when we could shake hands, uh, how you how you smile, how you sit down, how you uh, when you have a, a meal, how you how you hold your cutlery. So there's all these things that that then obviously a part of being a royal as in what makes your role and and that again is something that Kate would have some of it she would have had to to have learned not so much the personality because she's always had a wonderful personality I mean I remember you know when I used to when I used to spend time with her she was always very polite she would never ask me to do something without a please or a thank you and in fact on some occasions I remember I would I would walk into a into a room or into um a kitchen or somewhere and she'd be doing something and I'd say, oh, look, can I, can I, let me do that for you? And she wouldn't have any of it. You know, she was like, no, no, I'm, I'm doing this. You know, she said, no, Grant, honestly, thank you, but I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And so she didn't, it's what I'm trying to say is once again, as I said with other members of the, fa the, the royal family, they, they don't ask you to do something that they, they won't, that they wouldn't do themselves. And that was something that was really, really nice about her. And also, as I've mentioned in one of my other conversations, the humour the fun side of it is is quite special, and you've seen that. You've seen the the kind of the can I use the word banter, banter, or the fun that she has with her husband, and the kind of antics they get up to. We've all witnessed it. At one point, when Prince Harry used to kind of join in, we saw it with Prince Harry, and you know that is something that is that's not made up. That is them, and I remember on many occasion if I was away somewhere with them, and this this will sound extraordinary, but you know I remember. Kind of maybe been in a kitchen or somewhere, and we'd all be sitting on the worktops. Um, can you imagine sitting on the worktops? Not very really good etiquette from my point of view, but you know, kind of sitting on the I say worktops but on the on the sides or something, and just having a, a conversation. We're just chatting about 
what was happening, whatever was, you know, what was going on. And and that one, and, and then, but the, the next minute, then I'd go back into my role of doing, uh, obviously, a job. And to have that kind of, that kind of approach is something that I always remembered and it made me feel very comfortable being around them and never afraid to ask anything because you knew you knew you could, which was which was quite special. When Kate grew up, she grew up in the little town of Buckerbury, which is the most gorgeous little um, a little village in Berkshire. And if you if you ever get the opportunity, it's worth having a little look. It's it's a very pretty little little place. It's quite small, um, a small little village, but you know it's got all the kind of you know it's got the news agent and the local pub. Uh, very important to have your local pub. So it's got all the kind of things that you know that a, a little community would need. Uh, I think it's even got a post office. But it's 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 so pretty, and it's just in in such a, a, a wonderful part of the country with great access, obviously, to get to London. But a really pretty little place in such a good such a good location and easy access to get to London, which would have been would have been quite handy, and not too far from from Highgrove because, again. I want to say potentially about an hour or so, so it's it's not too far, not too far at all. But um, as I said, if you ever get a chance to visit, it's worth having a little look and and go and have a drink in the local pub because apparently that is where um, Kate with her family would go and have a have a drink, and I believe Prince William would go in there as well. So you can follow in royal footsteps and have a have a drink in the local pub. Um, but actually, on saying that, I remember my local pub near where I am. It was quite often. When I was um, off in an evening, I'd go in and they would be there having a having a drink, uh, and it was always quite funny if you walked in and, and they saw you because they would they would kind of say hi and kind of call you over and you'd have a have a, a catch up with them uh, or a chat. <laughs> um, I don't know what we'd be talking about at that point, but you know we talking about something and um, but it was really nice seeing them in that in that that environment and also not just in that environment but also how the other people reacted with them. Everybody was very protective of them and that was quite nice to see that they would kind of leave them, leave them to kind of go on, um, which was really, which was really good. I also believe that Kate enjoyed her time in St Andrews. Obviously, that's when she dated Prince William, but before that, she actually enjoyed, she loved Scotland. Uh, she apparently enjoys going up there, uh, enjoyed her time in St Andrews and I've been told quite often by quite a few people there that it was, you know, they would obviously, when she was up there, she would make the most of it. You'd see her kind of on the beaches, going for walks in the local shops. So, you know, she she enjoyed she enjoyed her time at, at the uh, the university. And then, and then when she left, she then went on to work uh, in retail, and she did that for a few years before she actually married Prince Prince William. So she was not afraid of of work either. So she did she did do I say not afraid of work, but as in the retail sector, she was very comfortable in that area because that's what her parents were in, and she she was that's what she was going to kind of do as well. But then obviously fate played its hand, and and things turned out slightly different for her, which is probably a good thing for for all of us. <laughs> as we've all seen, Kate is a wonderful mother, and she's great with her children. Now, bearing in mind, I've I've obviously left since she's had her children, but I've been told. Uh, by colleagues of how good she is with them and how um, you know she really is passionate about the the upbringing which is obviously Im important and but what I one of my memories I do have is it was so strange it was it was again it wasn't too long after I had left and they had Prince George and I remember it was one of my first media engagements that I was asked to do so I was asked for it was either Sky News or BBC News to go up to Padding Station in London. Uh, I say Padding Station, uh, sorry, near Padding Station, St Mary's Hospital, uh, the Ludo Wing, where uh, she had given birth to Prince George. And I remember being there uh, with the rest of the world's media and I couldn't believe the interest um, from the world's media and, and how many of them were there. And and that's again when I felt really lucky, thinking, you know, this is, this is a couple this is a, a, a girl, a lady, who I had spent many times with on my own, um, and suddenly here I am, and can't even get near, can't get near her because of obviously security and press, and everything. Um, and I wasn't there obviously to see her; I was there to to do some reporting, uh, to be interviewed, I should say. But, um, but it was quite amazing to to see um, to see this uh, scene. It was it was extraordinary. 
And then of course when they when they came out with with Prince George, it was just such a lovely, uh, a lovely lovely image. And um, it's yeah, it's one of those one of those moments that I always remember. But I, I was reflecting at that point, thinking you know a few years a few years before when they were when they were dating, and I was kind of you know it made you feel how lucky made me think how lucky I was to actually get to spend that time uh, around around her and him. So it was 2013, which is is scary because you know that that's what eight years ago. So it's um, amazing how time how time flies by. Absolutely amazing. And I've been obviously back up for to work with the media when there's been other other royal royal births. Um, and equally, each one is just as as exciting as as the last. But I do yeah I do feel very proud, very lucky when I think you know how the time I got to spend looking after them and, and getting to know them. So the big question is, when uh, Prince William becomes king, obviously she's queen, but what does that mean? You know, what what is her, what are the, the titles? Well, there's a bit of a process before that because long live our queen, and I, I pray she's around for many, many, many more years yet, but when our queen is no longer here and, and she's died, then Prince Charles uh, becomes king and then only if he wishes now this is where a lot of people are surprised and get confused with this but only if he wishes will he then make his son the prince of wales and at that point catherine would then become the princess of wales and that would be obviously the first time the title has been used since prince william's late mother diana the princess of wales so they would be the Prince and Princess of Wales. And then when Prince William's father dies, William would then become the king. So he'd be King William V, potentially, unless he picks one of his other names. And his wife would become the queen. So she would then be Queen Catherine. But um, obviously time will tell if, if that happens. And as well as those titles, the, he would then have also the title Prince of Wales, which he could then bestow on his son Prince George, if he wishes, and then it then it carries on. So, it can be a little bit of a, a confusing thing when it comes to the titles. And and again, what people may not know is even our own Queen, when she was Princess Elizabeth, uh, upon marrying Prince Philip, she was the Duchess of Edinburgh. So at one point she was the Duchess of Edinburgh, uh, and then became the the Queen. So so the titles within the family do they do change. I always remember with Kate, if I ever watched her with other people, you know, she was always very genuine. That's something I liked about her is that if if people come up and talk to her, she would never, she would always give them time. She would never not listen to them. She would never not talk to them. Um, obviously, these days as a royal, she's got to, you know, timing is, is vital and, and things are timed for a reason. So it, it can be a little bit tricky. But I remember back in the day, she would always... Um, have time for people, which was really, which was really good, you know, to, for, to be like that. Um, I remember if I ever went to her house in Bucklebury, you know, to take something or to drop something off to her, she would always, there'd be no one else that'd come out, it would always be her, she would always come and find me, um, so they wouldn't send, I don't know, somebody else to come and to, to take whatever it is or to pass something on, it would be her herself, and, um, and once again she would have a catch up with me, and it was just the uh, uh, you know, and then she would kind of. I remember one of the first times in Buckleberry, she actually said, "Have you have you looked round Buckleberry? Have you been here before?" And it was the first time I had been, and I said no. And she's well, you you know, you should have a little have a little look round. She says there's not much to see, but it's and it's a lovely little place. So yeah, so I mean, she was very you know very good at that kind of thing, as with all the royals, you know, very good at kind of making people feel relaxed and comfortable, and. Um, yeah, it's a it's a great attribute if you're able to to do that, and she certainly she certainly has that. When I've been asked what's my favourite memory of of Kate, there's there's many, and and a lot of them I would not talk about because I feel they're private. But I mean, some of the things I do remember that I I, I liked was her humour. 
and I've mentioned that to you before. I like to humour. I like that. I like to I kind of giggle and you know when something would kind of go wrong or if she was to you know kind of say something it kind of made you suddenly start laughing. I, I, I like that. I like that kind of that side to her that you know, that kind of more relaxed side to. Her. I mean to be totally realistic here as a royal. The, the, the royals that you see, I mean, luckily you get to see the real them. There's, there's no two ways about that. You do see the, the real them, but you also see the kind of polished side of it, which is the, the acting, as I call it. And what I mean by that is that with any role in life, we all act. It doesn't matter if you work in a bank, if you're a policeman, a fireman, a butler, a royal, you act and behave as that profession um, should be. So as a royal, she acts and behaves as a royal and she's very good at it, as they all are, because they have to be, because it's really important that they're able to kind of deliver that side of it. But the other side of it, which at one point was always behind closed doors, but no longer, is the fun, humorous, down to air side. And that is something, as I said, that I always, I always enjoyed, you know, I, I, I like that side of it and it just made it more fun whenever you're kind of doing anything for her or going somewhere with her. It was just that 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 side of it just made it um, an enjoyable experience. So I would look forward to actually knowing that I was actually working with them or, or going somewhere with her or with him. I'd enjoy that because it it made it um, it, it just made it. You knew it was going to be a good a good time, and I I travelled the country with them. I mean, I've Scotland, Sandringham, uh, Wales, obviously London, so. You know that but it was always always good fun always good times good good memories I should also mention that Kate's involved with 20 um, organisations and military organisations as a patron or got an association with them which is quite normal as a royal that is something that you that you undertake and she'll only take on more as the years progress and more uh, charities and, and organisations are either passed on to her or that she that she takes on and, and again a huge asset to all these organisations because she's very much as well as being a royal She's a great um, brand ambassador for the royal family because who doesn't like Kate? Who doesn't enjoy watching or reading about her or looking at what she's wearing or who's she with? I mean, there's a huge, huge interest in, in her, which is, is fantastic for the royal family because you know that's what you want. But equally nice, there's a huge interest in her, her husband as well. And I think that's important that there they appears to be, if they're, doing a, if they're doing a public engagement and they're walking around, Equally, it doesn't matter who you meet, whether it's Prince William or Catherine, you're, you're both, they're, they're both received. You know, people are really excited to meet one or the other. I don't think people say, oh, that's great, I've met him, but I'd like to have met her. I don't think that that gets said. I hope it doesn't get said. Um, it was said at one time, that's what used to happen with Prince Charles and the late Princess Diana of Wales. But I think, um, I think today, I think people are, are, are glad to meet either. Uh, which is which is really which is really nice. I think the other interesting thing is with Kate is that her family have very much remained private. So even though she's married into the royal family, her family haven't kind of become part of the royal family. They're they're very much they're, they're very independent. They do their own thing. We're aware of obviously our sister and her brother. We hear about them, about what they're doing. Uh, obviously, Pippa's wedding was um, was a bit again a, a kind of a media event. Um, but the good thing is they, they've they've managed to kind of create their own their own private lives, and I think that's important. They're not trying to, you know, they're kind of giving Kate that that space and that time so that she can. Um, work on what she is, which is obviously becoming a member, well, she's become, but, you know, working on continuing to be a, a very um, important member of the British royal family. And I have no doubt her family fully support her as she supports them and what and what they do. 
but I think that's um, you know she's very much a, a family orientated person and a bit like the Queen Mother was as well. So and the Queen actually. So I think that's that's quite a, a very good attribute for her going forward. Is that that's the kind of person she's she is, and I think when the time comes that Prince William becomes king and she's queen with her family, you know, I think she'll be very much the the one that'll be she'll be quite an important figure, I think, you know, because that'll be a new royal family, very new royal family, be a, a, a royal family very much for the you know, the twenty first century, and um, the, it's not going to be easy for her because you know as as a queen she's got very 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 big shoes to fill um obviously queen elizabeth ii has done an amazing an amazing um job and it'd be quite it'd be quite wonderful to think maybe in another what 70 60 years or so that um or 70 years that, that there's the same admiration support uh for her and her husband as there was or as there is for the queen but only time only time will will, will tell but I, I hope it, that it's successful because it's really important that it does work and that people continue to support them and like them in order for the monarchy to continue, which I think is really, really important. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed today's in conversation. It was very much just me sharing a few memories and insights about Catherine, a future queen. And please keep the conversations going. Now, I always say I read the comments. I love the comments. Keep your ideas, suggestions coming in. But I also love this community. I love the the, the, the chat that you all have on the live chat on the Friday evening or in the UK Friday evening at five o'clock. But I'm also enjoying discovering that you're all having conversations within the chats as well on the videos. And it makes me smile when I see um, these conversations and, and thanks to some of you out there who are, who are answering questions on, on my behalf to, to people asking things, which is a huge help to me. So thank you, but it's really good fun. So keep that going. I love this this community, it's, it's, it's great. I'm very grateful to all of you. Please um, share these videos so that we can keep um, the audience growing and um, please keep subscribing because um, I enjoy I enjoy doing this and you know, I get a lot of fun from it. I hope you all do as well and please keep the likes coming in. But I will be back on Wednesday with the next At Home with the Royal Butler and then of course next Friday with In Conversation with the Royal Butler as always at 5pm. But before I go, I'm just going to quickly, just to show you the, the, the noises you've been hearing in the background. Here he is. Shumba has been here the whole time. Did you enjoy that conversation? Yes, was it was it fun? It's like you've woke me up. You've disturbed my beauty sleep and you haven't even brought me a, a glass of milk. A dog friendly milk, that should be very quickly add. Um, shame, I better let him, I better let him go back to go back to sleep. Well, I hope um, you've all managed to kind of stay awake for this. Uh, but as I said, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. And I will see you on Wednesday for At Home with Thoreau Butler. And as I said, until then, stay safe. Bye. <laughs>